Thanks, Cameron. Aren't poppers still produced like in the Vancouver area? I just I can't. Can we can we start that campaign for the reversal of that policy? They tried that in Australia, and I don't think the queers were having it. Um, okay, so you were a fabulous panel because you all came in on time, uh, which means we have time for questions from all of you folks. I think, uh, and there's a mic uh, on the right-hand side of the room for you folks. Sick, it is on. Excellent, cool. Um, I have a potential silly question for Schwartz? Yeah. Excellent. Um, is there the same risk of contaminated supply with papyrus as there are with other uh, substances such as uh, opioids? Uh, so the question was whether there are the same risks associated with opioids and papyrus? No, well, there's the risk of like the same risk of contaminated supply with oh. papyrus as there is with opioids. Uh, so there's, I'll start by saying there's no, you know, there hasn't been a lot of, you know, effort to study that. The general consensus, I'd say, is no. Um, it's, you know, there hasn't been any observed instances of poppers being contaminated with, say, fentanyl. Um, but there have been uh, things that are sold as poppers that are not in the amyl nitrite family, or the alkyl nitrite family, sorry. So, uh, no, there, there aren't really the same risks associated with other forms of like powdered drugs, for example, that might be contaminated, but there are you know, false products being sold. There are some harms associated with that, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of your work. And I appreciate the talking about consent and um, the need for us to be continually working on that. And especially when there are complex power dynamics or substances involved. And I'm wondering if there's any research on barriers or interventions that would support more of a culture of consent. And if you have any definitions that go beyond a permission or kind of contractual understanding that is dynamic, like for me, it's an ongoing process that's really active and collaborative and I just don't see that represented in research or um, our community as much as I'm hoping to in the future. Yeah, so um, it, is, it is a complex as we keep saying um, and I think that the stuff that will come out of our interviews with the guys in there may give us some more insight, which we haven't analyzed yet. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's tricky because consent is ongoing. Consent is act hopefully, you know, in some ways actively established, but there's also, you know, certain expectations within certain PNP scenes and chemsex scenes where, you know, it's not going to always be as verbal or as easily um, conveyed, particularly you know if if other kinks, uh, people being gagged. I mean, it's really, you know what I mean. Like, I think what's important, I I would hope, and I think this is a lot to do with consent, is just increasing empathy in general, and not seeing people simply as se sexual objects. And that, I think there's a real temptation for that when people are already high. Um, and on the apps and just scrolling, trying to get, particularly in the scene of sex parties, um, and trying to get more guys and so on in, in, into the environment. So I think it has to happen in some ways before and hopefully that those kind of attitudes maintain themselves through different types of, uh, of highs. Um, but there's no easy answer to it, I don't think. I think that there is a dialogue that has to happen and hopefully in some ways that we protect each other within a community as, as much as we can. I mean, we have all, I, th I think a lot of us have probably heard of horror stories that have happened in these scenes where consent was not obtained and was, you know, clearly um, uh, broken uh, in a lot of ways. And not just around sexual consent. I think that's the other thing. The, the consent discussion has to extend beyond just sex, right? It's consent to the amount of drug use, the type of drug use. Um, 
to the different type of activities around risk and, and SDVVIs and so on. So it's it's not it's not one thing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I'll add to that a little bit too. Um, so I'm just thinking about how sex and substance use are represented in the media and in society kind of broadly. Um, and I would argue that both are really highly problematized. Um, and then this kind of leads to an assumption that anything goes with sex or with substance use um, and a real like devaluing of people who use drugs or people who have sex or, or do both, whatever. Um, a devaluing of their agency and of their capacity to consent. Um, so I think we can totally work to shift that culture, um, educate folks on consent as well, um, while also addressing like wider systems of oppression like heteropatriarchy, colonialism, and so on, um, that really feed into those power dynamics at the root cause. Yeah. I just want to say one last thing about it is I also don't want to paint too broad of a brush because I also know of a lot of scenes in people who host parties who are very protective of the people that come there. So it's not, you know, but the reason I was speaking about the other stuff is because the other stuff does happen as well. So, yeah, just want to say that as well. All right, final question very quickly, please. Uh, I wonder if any of your uh, work and your research is being connected to some of the people uh, both here locally and across the country who are dealing uh, with trying to have uh, substance use move more into a, a health perspective rather than a judicial perspective. I think of people like uh, Don McPherson at uh, SFU, the Canadian Institute for Substance Use, etc. because I think the research you're developing should be part of that conversation and part of the rationale, I'm going to be redundant, rationale to move towards more rational drug use policy in this country. Um, yeah, that's a great question. So I think the question was, was kind of getting at how um, research and work related to substance use or even harm reduction is framed and whether it's framed as uh, like a judicial issue or like a health or social issue. Um, so I think at least for me, I approach substance use from a critical perspective. So seeing substance use and harm reduction is not something that's just like biomedical, um, which much of the research and much of the practice has been focused on, um, but totally viewing substance use as something that's like socially and um, as that's a social issue and a health issue as well. And I, I think we can totally shift that research culture and um, practice culture to be more um, equity oriented and more inclusive um, and not just disease focused or problem focused. Well said. Um, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoy the rest of these few hours at the summit and let's give a round of applause to our panel.